Citizen and Seiko. It's like red and blue, blood and water, Jedi and Sith. It's likely that when you first got into watch collecting, you owned either one of these brands. They are the most largest and recognizable brands in the watch industry. Seiko has developed a bit of a habit in the last few years, the habit of releasing far too many watches. I have some numbers for you. In the first half of 2022, Seiko has released 155 new models. Last year in 2021, there was 408 different models released from Seiko, not including Grand Seiko and Credor. That's an unbelievable, unbelievable number of watches. In comparison to Seiko, Citizen has released a quarter number of watches that Seiko has done in the whole year. And I'm talking about the Promaster lineup, which I think is the direct rival to the Seiko Prospects line of watches, professional grade watches that are meant for land, air, and sea. These watches, I think, represent Citizen and what I believe them to be old Seiko. Reasonably priced watches for a niche audience, durable, and cool designs. Old Seiko used to be somewhat of an acquired taste. This is kind of what New Citizen is like. The Orca Diver, which is labeled the Promaster Diver of today, has its weird, quirky whale design elements. And that is directly from the 90s. It can be considered a reissue. You might be wondering, why am I making this comparison? And that is because for the first time ever, Citizen has released a dive watch that is in the direct firing line and competition of Seiko's most popular dive watch. This year, we have the NB6021-68L, or the Challenge Diver reinterpretation. The Save the Ocean line of watches is a reflection of Seiko's efforts and initiative of part of the Marine Debris Program in affiliation with PADI. That is to include and involve 70,000 divers in mapping out the ocean floor for cleanup. Outside of the fact that they look very similar to each other, if you were squinting and you were just rubbing your eyes, you could mistake either one of them. They both have 200 meters of water resistance, they're both featuring metal bezel inserts and have flat sapphire crystals. Affectionately named the Challenge Diver back in 1977, it was a watch that was buried for over 10 years in the elements that's in Australia at the Long Reef Beach, where later on it was discovered in full working order and still watertight. That's a story that most watch brands wish they could have for their dive watches, a testament to durability. And Citizen brought this watch back with its classic proportions. It's very eerily similar to the original watch, even down to the Mercedes hands that might be very controversial. But you got to remember, all dive watches that were in the time span of the 80s to the 90s were very similar to the Rolex Submariner. That was the popular dive watch everybody had to have back then. However, the watch we have here today is not the same as the original. It is in full titanium with Citizen proprietary Duratec coating. Duratec coating is very hard coating, good up to 1000 Vickers in the hardness Vickers scale. And it's a durable coating, I think second to Zinn's Tegmented Steel. I've placed the watch on hard concrete on wooden benches while I was doing my video work. And when I lifted the watch up, there was no marks of wear whatsoever. If the Citizen is proven to be more than five times more durable than stainless steel, the Seiko does steel with dye shield coating applied on top, which is good up to about 500 on the hardness Vickers scale. That's half the durability of the Citizen, which means it will scratch a lot easier than the Citizen at the end of the day. Comparing both movements, the Citizen has the Caliber 9051, which beats at a higher beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour compared to the Seiko. Now, that is accurate to 2 seconds per day dial facing up as seen here, but it falls short in the power reserve department, being only 42 hours of power reserve, which is kind of unacceptable in this day and age. The Seiko, on the other hand, it beats slower, which means that it will have a longer service interval. It would last a little bit longer. The accuracy does leave a little bit to be desired at 8 seconds out per day dial facing up. The power reserve does make up for that, however, being 70 hour power reserve.
both watches are pretty comparable in the dimensions and I do not want to bore you guys with the numbers. They're on the screen, pause if you have to. But here are the facts. The Citizen is slightly wider than the Seiko, half a millimeter. And in terms of length, the Citizen is also shorter, about half a millimeter as well. The thickness of both of the watches, the Citizen actually wins out in this area, being only 12 and a half millimeters thick compared to 13.9 millimeters of the Seiko. So all in all, you have to take apples to oranges here. They're quite similar. One area that's a downfall for the Citizen is the smaller crown at 5.3 millimeters compared to the Seiko 6.1. I wish it was larger. It's kind of a letdown because it really leaves for an imbalanced look or unbalanced look for the case. Too many times I hear a lot of reviews say that they have to be a certain size to fit a certain wrist. Buy what suits you and you only for your wrist. The thing to know about both these watches, the Citizen is considerably lighter than the Seiko at 75 grams versus 180 grams for the Seiko with its bracelet and steel construction. Seiko and their bezels have always been intriguing to me. Each one of their watches have felt different. 120 click bezel is a nice feature compared to the 60 click bezel of the Citizen where I felt disappointed by the bezel action of the Citizen. It feels tinny and a little bit cheap. I think this is because of the titanium construction. The bezel itself just feels more hollow and less assuring than Seiko. YouTube seems to think that at this point I lose over half of you in terms of retention. I do want to say thank you for watching. And if you feel that there's value in my content, please help the channel grow by subscribing. Both of these watches are different in the way they approach metal, titanium versus steel. Titanium has its obvious benefits, being more corrosion resistant, and it's lighter and stronger, stronger as in for its weight than steel. But steel has its obvious benefits too, being more assuring on the wrist, feels like it's just a higher quality piece in terms of on the wrist feel. Both of them have fold over clasp, nothing exceptional. They have a dive extension too, with the Citizen being slightly easier, easier to operate. I was shocked to discover that the Citizen's bracelet has polished elements within the links. It is a letdown, however, on both sides of the clasp for the Citizen and the Seiko being fold over clasp, with the Seiko having four points of micro adjustments and the Citizen getting away with two half links on each side of the clasp. Both bracelets use pins and collars. In fact, I think the Citizen uses both pin and collars, but the Seiko only uses pins. The dials of both watches are where we see a huge departure in approach. The Citizen being more matte in a deeper rich blue. The Seiko taking the dial to the next level with its exceptional textured glacier-like dial, which seems to be the main course of what you're seeing here in visual appeal. The indices on the Seiko seem to shine brighter than the Citizen, and that's seen within the sheen of the loom that's been applied on top of the hour indices too. The date is cut away very simply, and the printing itself kept quite simple with the Prospects logo, Automatic Divers 200. The Citizen, on the other hand, although having very similar shape for the hour indicators, the hands are a big departure. The Mercedes hand with its hollow midsection stands out more than the Seiko's squared off rectangular hands. Divers 200 meters titanium, two lines, I like how simple that is. I like the subtlety of the Citizen dial, a rich dark blue hue, it doesn't shout about itself. It makes those hour indices pop and stand up on their own. The dial quality is good, not excellent. The quality of the Seiko's dial I think is a cut above the Citizen. Seiko have been the masters of making exceptional dials with interesting textures and colors. And this is no different for this comparison here. These are not perfect watches and I don't think any one watch can be perfect. But both of them represent good comparison and competition to one another. The Citizen being extremely important to the brand as a whole for the Promaster lineup as a direct comparison to Seiko's Prospects watches.
Now the Citizen does have its flaws. The undersized crown is a letdown. I wished it had the same size crown as the Seiko to balance out the case to the bezel to the dial dimensions and the overall proportions. Another area that I think the Citizen could do better is the finishing of the dial and the overall quality of the dial. The bezel action is really disappointing in my opinion. 60 clicks and it feels just very unassuring and uninspiring compared to the Seiko at least. That's an area that I think Citizen could improve upon. Seiko is not without its flaws. It's another blue dial in the long line of other blue dialed Seiko dive watches. It's also 180 grams, nearly three times the weight of the Citizen and you do feel it on the wrist. Outside of that, it's expensive. At 1600 Canadian dollars, it is not a cheap dive watch in any capacity. The Citizen I was able to get online just a few days after launch for a hefty 30% off retail value. And in my country, the watch goes for about 1300 Canadian dollars if you were to order it directly online through Citizen. That's a big deal. Bloom from the Seiko will shine brighter from the initial reaction to light, but the Citizen's loom will last longer than the Seiko under the same type of lighting environment. Both of these are excellent in terms of loom. Uh, Seiko uses their Lumabrite. Citizen uses their own variety of loom. I can't confirm or find any information about it, but I do think these are both comparable. 